so next on, I'm going to introduce uh, Louis Moreau from uh, Edge Impulse again, because I've already introduced him once. Um, but this time, he's going to talk in a little bit more detail um, on uh, the work that Edge Impulse has been doing on object detection um, uh, algorithm. And he's going to go into the depths on that. So Louis is, is a develop senior developer re relations engineer at Edge Impulse. Thank you, Martin, for the introduction. Um, today, I'm going to speak to you about FOMO, uh, what we've seen together yesterday. I'm not sure if every, of, uh, every one of you were uh, uh, assisting the, 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 the workshop. Uh, what we did, we trained uh, like a, a small, uh, small model that could recognize our face, and it was actually running on, the, uh, on microcontrollers, so on a Cortex-M7. Um, FOMO stands for uh, faster objects, more objects, and it's a, a new technique that, we would, that we've developed internally. It's fully open source. Uh, the name is kind of fun. Um, uh, yeah, it uh, stands also for uh, like fear of missing out. I think it's a great, uh, great marketing catch. Uh, this, I'm um, not going to spend too many details. OK. Um, so I'm just going to give a bit of context about the image processing approaches um, that, we, that we support on the, on the studio. So first is the image classification. That's a basically a binary classification. And uh, the question the, the model is trying to answer is, is there a face in the image or not? It's like, a, is it a dog or a cat? That's a, that's a default, uh, default model. That works great, uh, but we don't have any information of the location of, uh, of the face, nor uh, we cannot count either uh, the number of objects in, uh, using image classification. Then uh, we have something else, which is uh, object detection using bounding boxes. This is also something that we support. And the, model, the, the question the model is trying to answer in that case is, um, are there faces in the image, uh, where they are, and one important thing, what size they are? That uh, works, works great. Uh, we are using MobileNet V1 and MobileNet V2 uh, transfer learning techniques to do, to do that. And then, uh, but we had a, an issue on, uh, with, the, with the previous uh, version is that it was hard to run that on, uh, on microcontrollers. Then uh, Matt Kelsey, one of our uh, in researchers, with, he's been in the machine learning field for, for 20 years, it probably was not called machine learning at the time, um, but still, and he came up with an idea um, we can simplify the way we do object detection um, just by uh, using centroids. So here, uh, we lose one important dimension, which is the, uh, the size of the objects. And the model, uh, the, 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 the question the model is trying to answer here is, are there faces in the image and where they are? We actually notice with our users and customers that the dimension of the, of the, of the, of the object is not always important in a, in a use case. And sometimes like, uh, the, the, the size constraint of the model uh, is, is more important than, than actually the, the, the size of the, um, of, of the object. So um, I'm just going to give you, a, like, again, if, just for the context, uh, What's, what's behind the object detection with MobileNet V2 SSD FPN line 320 by 320 pre-terrain model? That's a complex, uh, that's a complex uh, sentence. So I'm going to split that a bit. Um, so in this uh, MobileNet V2 SSD FPN line 320 by 320, we have th th four uh, main things. First one is the base network, so the backbone. Um, here we are using MobileNet, but we could use something else. Um, so MobileNet V2. Um, MobileNet V2 actually provides high-level features for classification or detection. Um, you can use a, a fully collected layers at the end and a softmax, and then you get a, you get a classification. So on top of that, uh, we have a detection network, SSD uh, multibox. This, uh, well, you have two common uh, like techniques. Uh, one is SSD, single shot detection, and the second one is RPN-based, a uh, regional proposal uh, network. Um, when we use SSD, we only need to take one shot at the image, so it's actually a bit, uh, a, a bit faster. It has some drawbacks as well, um, especially the, the different size of the objects in, in the image. And for that, we have uh, on, top, on top of it, we have something called a feature extractor, so FPN light. Um, I'm not going to enter into, into details, but the goal is to improve the accuracy and the speed uh, while being able to recognize different objects like, uh, that have different size in the image. And then uh, we are using transfer learning uh, for, because, because it's great, you can uh, use some, some weight. Like uh, we, we take a base model, uh, so the MobileNet V2, 
uh, that has already learned a lot of features. For example, what is an edge? What is maybe an eye? What is a tire? What is a, what is a car? Um, so we keep all this knowledge and we transfer that knowledge um, into, uh, well, in, into, the, into the new model. And we can train um, only the last layers with a complete different, uh, with a complete different data set. So we actually, uh, it, it requires much less time to, to train a model and the results are, are, pretty, are pretty good. And we can use a very small data set. Uh, I've been doing some, I think yesterday, the demo. I did, uh, I only required uh, 400 images, but um, I think I've, I've shown uh, on the demo table to some people over there uh, just before, like uh, I, I could do almost the same, like with a, a bit less, uh, better accuracy, but with only 70 images, uh, I had good results already. Um, so yeah, that's great, but one of the problems is that it's poorly suited for MCUs um, because, because of the RAM that it, that it needs, uh, of the size of the models, because we need to, to use all the weights, etc. So um, we came up with this new FOMO, faster objects, more objects. And the, goal was, the main goal was to run on MCUs at the, at the very beginning. Then we tried different, uh, different approaches. And it's still based on uh, mobile nets, but you can change the backbone uh, if, if, if you'd like uh, using our ex expert mode. And it's super fast, we, we noticed that. Uh, on Raspberry, we can achieve something like 60 frames per second uh, and 30 frames per second on Cortex-M. I think I've got one demo after uh, that actually, uh, uh, it's uh, around, uh, around this, uh, this speed. Or um, even on uh, Cortex-M4F, uh, we have some, <coughs> something around like eight to 10 FPS. And it's actually way better at detecting small objects. I'm not sure if you've used a, a mobile net SSD before. Um, when you're trying to, to find small objects in an image, like usually the model uh, has, has trouble to do, to do so. Um, and it's capable of segmentation. Uh, we'll see probably that after. And uh, at counting objects, because you know the number of, of, of objects. So if we're taking the, the mobile net uh, V2 architecture, here I've got a, a 240 by 240 image. Um, what actually happens here is that we are going to cut uh, the, the mobile net v2 um, like backbone around the bottleneck uh, residual block three or four, uh, three. So by doing so, um, we have a kind of, we, we create a kind of a grid. So at the moment it's divided by, f by eight by default. It's where we, where we cut in the, um, in the, mo in the mobile net uh, backbone. And so we keep the weights on the, on the one side and we can, we can think of a, of, a, of a grid, so feature maps, it's a representation. And then each of those cells in that grid will be classified independently using a, a fully conventional layers. So that's great. Let me show you an example. Um, here we have like the, an image, the, the same image, and uh, each of the each of the, the part of the, of the cell of the image will be classified independently. In that case, it's uh, either it's a background, a ball, a, a dog, or a toy. Um, let me give you an example. Like uh, it's probably going to be easier, and I'm going to show you what's actually in the background, uh, how we run that. So. This is an example. I, I took some screws uh, in, my, in my desk and I just put it on a, well, in, my, in my garage and I just put it in my desk. And um, I took a couple of pictures of that to, 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 to explain. So here I've got a grayscale image. The image is 96 by 96. And uh, so it creates a fake feature maps, well, a fake grid of 12 by 12 uh, if you keep the division by 8. Um, to keep in mind, like uh, we want uh, at Edge Impulse uh, that our model can be interoperable, uh, whether you want to use MobileNet SSD or you want to use FOMO. Uh, we want you to keep the, the, the bounding boxes when you label your data. Uh, first, because it's kind of a, a standard, even if uh, everyone has a different way of writing it, it's, it's, it's always a mess. Um, so we let the users draw bounding boxes around the, around the regions of interest. And uh, for the, actually for the training, we only take the center of the image, um, which actually leads to some limitation. For example, the head and the tail of the, here of the screws uh, will, will be completely ignored during the, during the training. Um, but we figured out that those, um, well, this model actually, it actually performed quite well, just, do, just taking the center of the image. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we apply a classification. So each, each grid is classified independently. So if we stop from here, we have a segmentation. Like uh, we have a segmentation map. What we do um, in the, like the post-processing step is that we get rid of, um, 
of the cells that are um, how can I so we get rid of the cells that have the less uh, probability around the one which has a, the, the highest probability. So we only keep those ones. Um, this also leads to another limitation that, that we will see together, together straight after. And uh, here we've got our centroids, and that's how we do FOMO. Um, so when, when Matt Kelsey uh, developed that, uh, that algorithm, he actually uh, wanted to count bees on like, uh, using a small microcontroller. So the, the goal was to detect small objects uh, using on microcontrollers. So if I compare a bit the, the specification in between uh, mobile net v2 and FOMO, um, in both cases, like uh, we use bonding boxes for the labeling methods. The way we use mobile net v2, we use a pre-trained model, uh, and the size is fixed. So 320 by 320. Uh, you can import other pre-trained model uh, if, if you want, uh, but it's not uh, like 100% uh, like. Uh, easy to use and uh, you cannot pick it uh, as, as, as you go. And the uh, image format is only RGB for the one that we have. Uh, on FOMO, oh yeah, that's something that, uh, that's really important, is uh, the input size is 320, uh, 320 on the, on the one side, and on FOMO, uh, due to its fully conversional nature, uh, we, any square image works. So you can train a, uh, a neural network, well, you can train a FOMO model using 240 by 240 images, but it will work on uh, 96 by 96 or with 320 by 320. We just need uh, the, um, the image to be square. And that's, that's, actually, that's actually super powerful. Um, image format on the one side is only RGB, the other side is grayscale plus RGB, uh, and the output is bounding box on the one side and centroids, so you lose one of the dimension, which is the height and the width. Um, on our side, we cannot run mobile net v2 on M MCUs uh, using our SDK, but on FOMO you can. Um, both are supported by CPU, GPUs. So on, for the mobile net, the limitation, it works best with big objects when, uh, when the region of interest takes a large portion in the image. The model uses high compute resources, I mean, in the edge computing world. Um, it's called mobile net because it could run on mobile, so it was already shrinked from uh, like big, big cloud, uh, cloud models, and the image uh, size is fixed, so we have less, fl less flexibility. On the other side, um, the model works in its ideal condition when the, when the images have almost the same shape and the same size. Uh, for example, if you have on the foreground like a face and in the background a car, um, as it's different uh, sizes and we, like, we divide the base image in a grid, uh, we have like a, the, the model doesn't, is not in its ideal or normal conditions. Um, the size of the objects are not available, and uh, the objects should not be too close to each other. Uh, because of the post-processing that we apply, we get rid of the, um, of, of the, like, of the one that has the, well, I'm sure you understood me. So, yeah, we had, a, for example, one cell with 100, or, uh, one, uh, an 0.91 probability, and if the one just next, uh, next to it has a 0.75, we just get rid of it to, to, to not to multiply, uh, to over, uh, overcount objects. Um, that's just a small benchmark that we did. So on, uh, on mobile net, uh, we had something around, like, I think it was probably seven or eight frames per second uh, using mobile net. And FOMO, we could uh, achieve some stuff around 60 frames per second. Um, this is an example. Uh, Oh, it's in a PDF. Okay, so um, okay, um, you can you can stop after at our booth. I've got a, a FOMO demo with our face. Basically, it was counting. So you have different classes. You can count uh, both Coke uh, Coke cans and uh, and a beer. And here it was. Um, so you you cannot really see it, but it was around uh, here. Uh, we have 29 frames per second. Um, if you want to go further, uh, feel free to create an account on Edge Impulse. We have, uh, I wrote a lot of documentation about, uh, about FOMO, so feel free to have a look at uh, uh, edgeimpulse.com slash FOMO or directly on our documentation website. And if you just want to get started with Edge Impulse, uh, we have a nice uh, getting started wizard where you can actually build a keyword spotting model in less than five minutes. Uh, you just record your own voice, um, render, like, just uh, let, uh, well, let, let you uh, Feel free to let you uh, being guided by the by the wizard by the wizard, and then uh, you'll arrive with a with a with a tiny uh, keyword spoiling model. Um, I wanted to like in the other presentation I just updated. I wanted to give you just a heads up of uh, what's the next versions 
of, uh, of FOMO that we are working on at the moment. Um, so we are working on using FOMO for anomaly detection, so using visually visual anomaly detections. Um, when you when you use anomaly detection, usually we use uh, like clustering methods, uh, where for example you just make sure one data sample actually fit into a cluster. If it's too far away, um, like we can consider that as an anomaly. Um, what we are working on at the moment is uh, we are. Are, we are going to train uh, neural networks, and we actually are going to cut that to only take care of the neural network embeddings. And then on top of that, we are going to apply um, Gaussian mixture models. So by doing so, um, we can we can actually um, well, we, we can apply that to FOMO, and uh, only the cells that are considered different will be will be light up. For example, it's, if it's the cell that uh, has no well, you train a model using your standard. Um, like uh, without any anomalies, so that's the normal behavior. And the model, f uh, the the FOMO uh, anomaly detection model, we just light on the grid which uh, which part of our anomalies. Um, I had a had a small video, but feel free to stop as well on, on our booth uh, so that I, I can show you the, the next iteration. It's not ready yet, so usually I don't I don't I don't speak about things that are not fully ready. Uh, we are working on that. Uh, if you want early access, you can you can come to me or speak to to, to any of, of us, and it should be ready uh, so sometimes in early 2000, uh, 2023. That's it for me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm looking forward for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open the floor for questions.